Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I hope you've subscribed, because if you haven't, um, I'll pay you a visit. Oink, oink. <laughs> I don't like them in that chemist. Making me wait five minutes. Do you know why I am? <laughs> Dennis's now. It's cold today, isn't it? Proper cold. Right. Other than that, I so thought everything's alright. A few TV problems with the show, but all ironed out. Let's see what we've got on the agenda for today. Sam Sheedy on Boxing Royalty because he won a Commonwealth belt, didn't he? End of the day, Commonwealth champion. A lot of people don't even get to that level, do they? So I know he lost it to Liam, didn't he? But still an achievement in itself, isn't it? Nigel Benn and uh, Michael Watson had it. I don't ever think Michael Watson went above, uh, never won a world title, did he? Uh, Baddest man on the planet. Baddest man on the planet. Baddest man on the planet. Uh, there's only one bad man on the planet in the moment. We know who that is, don't we? Deontay Wilder, he's the baddest man on the planet. By a mile, by a country mile. By a country mile, snivels again. Everybody will think I'm in big tight of my mind, won't they? Because I've got a few snivels. Oops. Oh my god, I'm stood behind him now. Oh. Uh, this guy in front is the bane of my existence lately in traffic. Oh, he nearly ran into me, chemist. Small guy, about 130. And he's polo. You know what I mean? What can you do? Polo patrol. I'll smoke him down here, shall I? I might look a bit speed camera. Uh, baddest man on the planet, Deontay Wilder. It's by a mile, isn't it? Wilders, look, you're there to knock people out. Heavyweight boxing's about knocking people out. I don't want to see people fumbling the way to a decision or running clock down and trying to nick it. There's too many people winning world titles trying to nick it and playing it safe. You're there to entertain, but they're too busy writing a narrative behind the screens. Oh, they've got a great story, it's a great story and all that. There's too much of that going on and not enough people going for it. For example, I mean, you've only got to go back, haven't you, to... I always make, I always make this about them, but they just think they're so cocky, don't they, match you right? When they had Snooker tied up, they never had Alex Higgins, didn't they? And they never had Jimmy White to start, until they started chipping away at Jimmy. Now what happened were they had percentage players. Now you go and look at any snooker match with Steve Davis in. He doesn't do anything. He grinds them down and waits for them to make a mistake. You know you'll get Higgins in there, he'll try and open the pack up. I mean Alex Higgins used to even break off and try and keep and break off break off off the bottom cushion. Break off. And do you know why they do that? They're trying to keep the, the ball down at the, the other end because he wants you down at that end where he can score heavily and break them up. He needs them reds freed up. Davis just sit, used to sit back, didn't he, and wait until they'd made a 60. All reds open, they'd make a mistake, then he'd pounce, wouldn't he? 
I don't like snooker like that. I like to see him go for it. Too many percentage players like Dennis Taylor with big glasses. and They spun this narrative, didn't they? Cliff Forb and the gambler. Dennis Taylor with double glazing bins. Forb and the grinder. Steve Interesting Davis with ginger hair. They spun it that much that the snooker went to pot, didn't it? After 1989, 88, 89, snooker were dying on its ass. It peaked, didn't it? With Dennis Taylor against Davis, didn't it? That final frame. Now, if you remember, I'm just going to go back and tell you a little, little story before we talk about Wilder. And this shows you the mentality of Barry Hearn and his brat. Although his brat wasn't about in them days, was he? But when Alex Higgins won the world title in 1972, right, a couple hundred people and the dog watched it in a British Legion in Birmingham. That's a true story. 1972. Forward 13 years, they had television and 20 million watched Taylor against Davis. Who was responsible for that? Alex Hurricane Higgins were responsible for that. But Barry Earn wouldn't sign him, would he? Because he needed cannon fodder for the rest of them. And that's the true story. They used Higgins to put bums on seats and create the headlines and they feed it off it. That's the true story. And it's the same with boxing. They're not going to put Joshua near any danger at all. It's just not going to happen. Go on then, get in your lane. It's just not going to happen. And it's the same with boxing. They're not going to put him near anything that's dangerous. No, no, no. It's good marketing. But they're there to entertain. And there's too many people not entertaining in boxing. While they're entertained, you know what you're going to get? You're going to get people iced. Wilder's an ice man. If this was Stone Age, he'd be an ice man, wouldn't he? Or he could play an ice man in a Batman film, couldn't he? He could do. But... It's sunny today, isn't it? I say it's raining. But now, too many people are not... entertaining. Wilder's the baddest man on the planet. There's nobody badder. And my prediction's Wilder. Ice's fury. Ice's him. All this talk about Fury gonna come out and Fury gonna come out and Ice Wilder. Are you telling me he's gonna trade with Wilder? No. Fury hit him with his best shots. Wilder never budged. Wilder only caught him a few times. Every time he caught him, it would timber. So I've got Wilder to ice him, and I'm gonna put a big bet on. I'm not gonna predict a round. I've got Wilder to ice him. I don't think Fury can perform like that again. I think Wilder will be better prepared. Fury will be better prepared, but what's he going to bring to the table? He's never been an ice man, has he? So... He fights. He's a fighting man, but he doesn't fight, if you know what I mean. When he gets in there, it's... Masterful boxer and his skills are extraordinary. But I thought he was sloppy last time out against Wally. Sloppy. I ain't falling for all that weapon behaviour from John Fury on BT Sport. Nah, I'm not falling for They've only got him on there for ratings, haven't they? I'm not going to fall for that. Nobody dares say a word to him, but I ain't falling for that. No way. So I've got Wilder to Ice Fury. I'm not going to predict a round. But if he talks drive, he'll go in five. Shout out to all you people on your breaks in local gyms watching channel. Thank you very much. You know who you are. <laughs> Tell you what, just seen an orange Sirocco. Orangey gold, look nice. Looking at. Nice bronzy colour, I like that colour. I, like, I don't like two tone, I don't like that, but I like that colour, look nice. I like these wraps that they're all doing. Anybody needs any wrapping doing? CS wraps in Edlington. Back at Edlington Motors, Bungalow Road. Come see me. I'll sort some wrapping out for you. Go on then. Look at this here, man. What are you doing? Jesus, can't even get that motorway these days without there being aggravation. 
but uh but yeah wild is the baddest man on the planet no ifs no buts he's a bad dude i was looking at some of his knockouts last night and yeah he's there to knock knock them out isn't he you can always only beat what's in front of you if you expect it to beat somebody you've got to beat him, man you've got to get him out of there what's going on here oh that wasn't a good move russ Oh! Quite a bad move, wasn't it? <laughs> In roadworks. Sleeting it down today. Have you watched the Wilder again? Spilker fight. Woo -hoo -hoo. What about that Lakovic? I mean, people go on about. Wilder's CV, but he's done Stavern twice, former WBC champion. He's done Lakovic, former WBO champion. That's three wins over world champions. Tyson Fury's only got Cunningham and Vlad on his record, that's two. So how can they keep digging Wilder out about his CV? If you want to talk world champion wins, which is what I like to talk, as you all know. So, I don't get where Tyson's coming from with that. He's got a win over Vlad. That's it. That's it. And he's been dropped against him in a fight that he's saying he won. And he gets rid of his trainer. That, to me, is panic stations. Ben Davidson showed blueprint how to beat him, didn't he? And you get rid of him. Would they have got rid of him, rid of him if they'd have got the win? No, I don't think they would. This is what I think. I don't think they'd have got rid of him. Uh, I don't want to make this video about Ben Davis because I thought he was behaving like a cock when he was training Tyson with some of the media, but I think he's playing victim now. But oh, he's obviously an up and coming trainer. Maybe it might be a bit inexperienced, but how do you get that experience? I don't know. I don't know how you get that experience, but all this chopping and changing between him and Tyson and Billy Joe and all that, I don't know. Who's to say that Ben Mott might not, might not even be in corner on night? I mean, you never know, do you? Boxing throws up all sorts of obstacles, doesn't it? Somebody told me that Ty and Boo's account's been deleted. Now, if that's the case, things in it don't know what's going on there it is a bit close to knuckles some of the stuff it comes out with though isn't it pictures of some of them pictures he puts up but I don't know people send me screenshots all the time it's a bit I don't know what's going on but Life's tough, isn't it? Life is very tough. But onwards and upwards next week for uh, our show in Barnsley. All them hardcore boxing fans keep telling me you're hardcore. Well, I'll see you at this boxing show then. Barnsley Metrodome. It's on television. I mean, how many people, how many promoters in South Yorkshire have got television? How many? Only Dennis, isn't that? All these big hitters, all these big hitters are doing, they're going on other people's shows, aren't they? You do best for your fighter, but if you're going to be a big hitter, a big player, you've got to have television, haven't you? So I look at it. Get a bit of telly and put your money where your mouth is, get your fighters some exposure. But everybody each to their own, and it'll kit him here going at middle of the lane. Transport a week, one, two, three, two, four, eight, ten cars on that, Audis. All of it road, man. Or banning. But on a, on a more positive note, Josh Whale sparring yesterday. Looking fantastic. 
looking the real deal. The looking the real deal Holyfield. Josh by knockout next Friday. Then on to bigger and better things. It's a pity that French kid pulled out, isn't it? His arse fell out once he heard about how Josh's camp were going. He didn't, he didn't fancy that Josh Wales smoke. What can you do? What sort of business are we in here where a man and his team agree a prize? A really good fee to fight. And then they come back weeks later and book goalposts. What sort of people do that? So the same with Darren Tetley, isn't it? His team agreed a fee to fight Tyrone Nurse in a derby fight on free sports television. And then they just changed their minds. What sort of business is that? Bit of still school duggery going on that, isn't there? People keep trying this skullduggery, don't they? Nobody does anything, do they? Nobody does a thing. Nobody does notes. Like I said, there's talkers. And the smoky bacon walkers. There you go. Stuck behind you all day, mate. That's it. You're in fast lane doing 60, mate. Going to other lane, good lad. There's no worse is there than being behind somebody on motorway. And they're doing 60 in fast lane. Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, that, that heater's burning me ass. We'll see Michelle today, chat her up. Michelle going to boot camp three days a week now, tough mudder. <laughs> No honour now. Hey, I wonder if Jamie McDonnell will win a world title again. I was thinking about him last night when I was flicking through YouTube. When all said and done, nobody can take it away, the CV that that lad's got. Nobody. Nobody. And how long his reign was. I'm telling you, nobody can take that away from him. Did fantastic, man. Long arms on him, good style. Got to give him credit where credit's due. Even though he left Dennis, Dennis always picks him up. Got to give him credit, man. Did really, really well to last that long. He went over there twice, didn't he? To Texas, right? Two fights there. Go on, man. Doodling up road there, mate. Some motorway. So, that's about it for this morning. I think we'll wrap it up. Oh, we shut do that. that open. It's sunny now, isn't it? I might need to put the old, uh, what do you reckon? I put my gimp glasses on. Like a gimp in these, don't I? But it's getting a bit sunny. All these lights flashing at me. It's not blue ones, isn't it? I think I'm ready for some porridge. One thing about doing porridge, you, you're disciplined, aren't you? You get porridge, you become disciplined. You get out of your cell in the morning, you want to go to the gym, don't you? You get your cereals down, you know. You get disciplined. No discipline is the when you're out here. You go out to the fridge in the middle at night. You get a... Get a uh, Get a, a galaxy a pint of milk. It's not good, is it? You can't do that when you're doing porridge. You've usually got a bit of duff and custard at the side of bed that's gone cold. I won't touch that now, but trust me, in there you'll wolf it down. I were a pot noodle on myself and I wasn't there. Is it not pot noodle? Then pack it in noodles. I was a noodle baron. <laughs> One for two back. Or tuna, one for three back. I was ruthless with tuna when I were in there. I don't even like it. But I had loads of it. Uh, so all them people out there that have done porridge and you're not a nonce, I give more respect for getting through it. That's what I do. You've got to give more respect. It's like a dark cloud over your head doing porridge. But some of the best times in your life can be in there. 
Trust me, it's funny as old. It's just funny as anything in there, mate. I swear to God. So I miss it. I miss the discipline and the laughter. When I were in there, I had a missus who used to see more of her in there than when I went out. <laughs> Two hours a week on a visit. You sit there and talk about everything on the sun till you're bored to death. I never used to do that when I was out there, but it's funny, isn't it? Do you know when you're in there, all you want is a cup of tea with your missus. You're like, look, oh, I wish I were out there. We are last a cup of tea. I'd want no car, no money, no jewelry, no nothing, no job. I just want to be with my missus with a cup of tea. And then when you get out, you don't even want to go near your missus. You just want to be out with your mates. It's weird how jail does that to you, isn't it? Like I said, there's a lot of people that have not been to jail. It's amazing, isn't it? All them that have not been to jail, who I know, who were bang at it. I don't know, I don't know how they do it. They must be good at the jobs, that's all I can say. But it is what it is, isn't it? False. Oh, Alright, so peace out. Keep on trucking. Don't forget to subscribe and remember this. Deontay Wilder is the baddest man on the planet. You heard it here first, he will ice Fury, ice him. So I think Mick Whale thinks Fury's gonna win, I don't. And Josh thinks he wins, I don't think he wins, I think Wilder ices him. So, and he's icing sparring partners at the moment from what we're hearing. So, it's all good positive stuff in it. Because we are Wilder in heavyweight division, it'd be another ball feast with Vladimir, wouldn't it? So, anyway. Today is Tuesday, so how's your Tuesday going? <laughs> oh, news on the Umar front. He's back next. Thank you for watching today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and keep on trucking. Boom.